Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for allowing me to be away for a couple of days. Please don't ask me anything about golf. We had a great time. Wonderful weather. Sort of trained a little bit. And I think somebody asked me how many golf balls did you lose, and I said at least three dozen. So somebody graciously said that they would replenish us. So I'm looking forward to it. Where are they? They're going to make pins, aren't they? A couple of announcements before we get started this morning, please. We have the Change the World project that is this coming Saturday. We will be meeting down at Trinity Church at 745 Trinity Methodist Church, South Michigan Street, 745 in the morning. Um, I still need several people to sign up. We have the sign up sheets back there on the main table. Um, there are several of us that are going different places. You have opportunities such as car wash, with the, it's a youth activity, card making, which Bonnie, I think, did last year, didn't mind, who was part of that. There's a construction in West Harrison here in Plymouth. There's a landscaping project. I think Nancy, you're involved in that, aren't you? I think I'll with that. And that's at the Habitat House at 418 Maryland Street, Bremen. That's a little bit different. It's a little, little different location. Uh, park bench construction is a timer. These are all part of, these are all part of the churches that are within our cluster group. The sewing project, and we've got most of the ladies that have signed up from this church are part of the sewing project. It is here. Let me show you what they are making. It is a wonderful thing. They're making these shawls, and therefore cancer treatment patients. And the cancer treatment patients were saying our hands are cold, so they have prepared these little pockets so they can put their hands in it while they're sitting there to get their infusion to take place. We have, well, there's three of them up here. This is one. They have a red one. And then one of my favorites, it says Colts on there. I don't have it. <laughs> but this is a sign. Admission instead of top admission, this is a side admission for your hands. So these are wonderful things. These ladies are, are going to be sewing these. So if you can help out, if you'd like to be a part of that, the admission group is preparing meals and taking it over to the Bremen project. And I know some of the admission people are here, so don't forget to uh, bring food here. And David Wheatling will be taking it over to Bremen. <laughs> okay, confirmation. We started that at 9:15 this morning. We have a class of. Uh, the young ones, uh, that confirmation class will be given the opportunity to join the church on Father's Day, it's about five weeks away. We also have a group of adults that will be joining the same day. So we will have the kids we'll have the kids come up. Uh, those that want to join, they're going to they have a special presentation they're going to make for you uh, that morning, and then we will bring the adults up following that, and we will take in our, we're, we're close to a dozen to 15 right now. If you have interest in joining this church and you are not currently a member, please let me know and we can make those arrangements for you. I need to write to the former church and ask them to send memberships to me. If you are, this is your first church, you're not a member, I can take care of that too. It's called profession of faith. I can take you in on a profession of faith. We have all kinds of ways of getting you to be a part of the church. So keep that in mind, please. Uh, social concerns, trustees meet tomorrow night at 6.30. Worship can meet. Worship committee meets on Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Full list of things on the back of your bulletin. Make sure you check those out because there's something there for everybody. Other words of wisdom to share with us this morning before we go? Alright, lots of things to do. Staff parish. Staff parish relations committee. I did forget that. Sorry. It's at uh, okay. it's 7 o'clock.
in number 723 to the temporary would follow along the miners.
our church, our community, our state, our nation, and our world. As we express our joys and our concerns, we now recite the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you take a few moments to stand with me, please? Let's find somebody that you've not yet seen.
allowance is so small. <coughs> so I guess you're pretty lucky. I got you anything at all. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to you. There I said it, now I'm done. So how about getting out of bed and cooking breakfast for your son? <laughs> Mom says, I'm deeply moved. To which Calvin responds, did you notice the part about my allowance? <laughs> well, perhaps some of your moms are feeling a bit like Calvin's mom, and you're wondering, are my children going to remember to thank me for all the wonderful things that I've done for them? My mom once said, being a mom is a full-time job. Giving birth was the easy part. Showing up for work every day is the hard part. This is the day when we give something back to our moms, kids. This is the day when we say thank you to our moms for all the runny noses that they wiped, all the old bubble gum that they held, all the times we accidentally sneezed right in her face, all the uh, elbows and scraped knees and all those boo-boos that she magically healed with a kiss. It's Appreciation Day for all those times she washed the blankets or sheets in the middle of the night, all those times she took us to school when we missed the bus, and things that we can't even mention here today. So lovers, thank you. Thank you for being with us children through the good and through the bad. I've always said that if it wasn't for my mom, I wouldn't be here today. <laughs> I've also said that if it wasn't for my mom's patience, I wouldn't be here. Because kids, I don't know how many times my mom would look me in the eye and say, Son, I brought you into this world, and I'll take you out. <laughs> but seriously, none of us could have made it without our mothers. Not only did you bring us into the world, you provided great comfort and stability ever since. And God's Word tells us, kids, that we're supposed to honor our mother. Okay? So allow me to encourage you. Sometime today, I want you to remember to hug your mom and tell her how much you appreciate her and how much you love her. Okay, guys? And at some point during the day, I want you to point at her and I want you to say this. Wow! Now that's a mama! <laughs> okay? You want to practice that? You ready? One, two, three... Wow! Now that's a mom! Now you wonder where I got that, right? Okay? The Bible says that a godly mom is a mighty force that reaches down through generations. In fact, it says this. I am reminded, I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois. It's a good name, right? Lois? And in your mother, Eunice. And I'm persuaded now lives also in you. So Timothy, Timothy's grandmother lived a godly life, which means Timothy's mother then led a godly life, and then Timothy grew up to be a godly man. And this is important because when we're young, like us guys, we need an example, don't we? We need somebody to live that all before us, what it actually looks like to live a godly life. Someone once said, mothers write on the hearts of their children what the rough hand of the world cannot erase. Our moms have that unique opportunity to build into us and, and the godly character and live it out before us so we know what it looks like. This is, is what Timothy can say about his grandmother Lois and his mom Eunice. His mom and grandma showed him how to be a godly boy and eventually how to be a godly man. Now, someone once said that everything you ever needed to learn, your mama probably taught you. Let's look at some of the things our moms have taught us. They taught us the logic. If you fall off that swing and break your neck, you're not going to score with me. <laughs> Humor. When your lawnmower cuts off your toes, don't come running to me. <laughs> Anticipation. This <laughs> is It's all. I got that one a lot. Receiving. You're going to get it when I get you home. And justice. One day you'll have kids, and I hope they turn out and act exactly the way you do. That's the parents' curse. Yes, our parents, our moms, have
have taught us a lot, haven't they? So sometime today, I want you to point at your mama, give her your greatest smile, and say, wow, now there's a mama. And moms, I would like you to ponder on this most special of days. As you consider your role as mom, as grandmother, years from now, will somebody be able to write a letter to your grandson and say, I've been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother and in your mother, and I'm persuaded now lives in you also. Kids, if you'll pray with me, then I have some things we're going to give to our moms and all the ladies here just to tell them we love them. Okay, will you help me pass that stuff out? Okay, let's pray. God, I thank you for these wonderful kids. Uh, I thank you for our mothers who have done such a wonderful job of watching over and protecting us. Help us to do a good job in return of telling them that we're thankful for them and that we love them. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you'll help me, we'll hand something out to all the ladies. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. The usher is pleased with us.
sacrifice of your Son, we express our love through these gifts. May be seated.
These are some of Jesus' last words according to the book of John. He is uh, knowing that his life on this earth is about to end and when he wants his disciples to see, to recognize, and to work forward to is a sense of unity by loving one another. Would you read with me, please, as we find this to be the inspired word of God? My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through your message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given Some of you have mothers or had mothers, 
exactly like that. And they have become a blessing in your life. I hope that you will take the time today, sometime, if your mother is still alive, give her a call, send her a gift, go visit with her if she is already on to her greater reward than give thanks in her blessed memory. I don't care how old you become, even if you were consider yourself an adult or others around you consider yourself to be an experienced adult, you are still not above correction by your mother. When his picture went off at the town council meeting in Knoxville, Tennessee, police chief Phil Keith looked at his picture and recognized that it was his mother's number. And so concerned, he gets up, he leaves the area. Now, this is being put on cable television, so for him to move away was, was quite the name. And he went to the press table and he telephoned his mother, and she said, Philip Keith, are you chewing gum? <laughs> His mother had been watching the town council meeting via cable television. Yes, ma'am, said the Knoxville police chief. Well, it looks awful. Spit it out. <laughs> and he dutifully took out the gum, dropped it in the trash can, and went back to the town council meeting. Just because everybody else considers you to be an adult doesn't mean you're not about correction from your mother. Sometimes mothers still know better and are willing to tell us. Moms everywhere have those unique qualities and universal characteristics, but I think the greatest and most common characteristic that all mothers have is what we are talking about this morning, a love and concern for their family and for their friends. Mothers from the Aleutian Islands to anchor a tree. Love is their greatest asset. And it may be the most defining characteristic that all mothers have. And that's why from our lesson from the book of John today is so appropriate that loving one another, bringing unity to your family, unity to your community, unity to your church is what it takes. Jesus is now facing uh, his ultimate uh, death and crucifixion. He does not have much more time on the face of this earth. And so he wants to take a few moments to make sure that the disciples are beginning to understand what has been happening with him, what he's been telling them, what he's been teaching them, what he's been showing them for the past three years. And in the verse right before what we read, Jesus says this to the disciples, this new commandment I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, I want you to love your neighbor and your friend. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Jesus was telling his disciples then and he's telling his disciples today that the obedience to the Mosaic law is not sufficient. The law of Moses required that you not hurt anybody. That's it. Don't harm, don't hurt anyone else. And yet the love that Jesus Christ has for us goes beyond the Mosaic law. This new commandment involves more than just not harming someone. It's to be working and being active for the good of other people, for the good of your neighbor, for the good of your family, for the good of your church. And for the followers of Jesus Christ, the final proof of your transformation is that you are loving other people. Theologian Francis Schaeffer wrote, if we do not show love to one another, the world has the right to question whether Christianity is true. Powerful statement. If we don't love other people, they have the right to call us hypocrites. We can't sit here on Sunday morning and say, oh, I love all of you. And then as soon as we leave there, we start talking about bad mouth and stabbing somebody in the back. That's not what it's about. 
biggest slam against the church today is the church is full of hypocrites because what we say here but what we do out there is different. 180 degrees out. We are supposed to be out there what we profess to be when we sit. That's why it's so appropriate to talk about loving one another on Mother's Day 2013. And you know, you realize that our mothers are very likely the first source of love. And for many of our mothers, she is the representation of what we have of a Christ-like love that we exhibit toward our spouse and our family and our grandchildren. So it came to my mind, what characteristics could I share with you this morning? that show that we think that we are in a relationship with, as a family, not just blood family, but spiritual family, on this special day. Point one. First of all, a Christ-like love is secure. Paul tells us that love never fails. And that's tough to do. Never fail. Everything else will pass away, Paul says but not love. When love is real, love is practiced, love is alive in your family and in your church, no one needs to ask, am I loved? Am I respected? Am I lovable? Genuine love never fails. Ever fails. You may remember that on Sunday, August the 16th, 1987, Northwest Airline Flight number 225 crashed just after takeoff from the Detroit airport. 155 people were killed. There was one survivor. A little four-year-old girl with the name of Cecilia. Newspaper accounts say that when the rescuers found Cecilia, they didn't believe that she was even aboard the plane. The plane came down on the interstate and hit several cars, and they thought that Cecilia was in one of those cars. But when they went back and checked the passenger manifest, they found her name, Cecilia. There. Cecilia survived this horrific crash because as the plane was falling earthward, Cecilia's mother, Paula, unbuckled her seatbelt and literally wrapped herself around little Cecilia's chair. And then the crash occurred. Little Cecilia survived because her mother would not let her go. Doesn't that sound like a modern day metaphor for the love of God for you and for me? He wraps his loving arms around us and says, you are my child. It's impossible to state in words to children today that kids have this, they, they don't think of it this way, but that need to know that they're loved and respected. To know that as a child, love provides that inner peace and security that we all need. Unfortunately, in today's world, there are too many children who are deprived this assurance. Second, the characteristic of a Christ-like love is, is supportive. A Christ-like love encourages, builds up. You can be critical in a positive way with your family. You can be critical in a negative way, which is not supportive and not helpful. Love builds up, always. Love never tears down. Casey Jones, who played in the National Basketball Association for several years, became the coach of the Boston Celtics several years ago. And he became famous because of his unique ability to give his players those unforgettable words of encouragement when they needed it the most. If a player scored 50 points or managed to shoot the, the game-winning shot, Casey Jones would walk by the player and say, nice game. Nothing more than that. Just a nice game. But when a player was down, when he was struggling, when he was not making the shots, and he was missing his three throws, and he was, he was in the turnover game that night, it was Casey Jones who was there to support and to encourage that player to do better. All 
all-star forward Kevin McHale played on that team with Casey Jones. And he went to Casey. Now, by the way, do you know that Kevin McHale was now the head coach for the Dallas Mavericks? And he went to Casey, Casey Jones and said, why is it that when I make this, these great shots, you never say anything? And this is what Casey Jones said. Kevin, after you made the winning basket, you've got 15,000 people cheering for you. All the television announcers are running towards you. You've got everybody giving you high fives on the way. You don't need me then. You need me when nobody is cheering for you. End quote. Wise parents know that. Wise spouses know that. Wise friends know that. Love is supportive. Love is encouraging. Love lifts. There are so many parents in our world today that give their children these beautiful homes and the best schools, but that's all they give them. They fall short after that. They fail to recognize when the child needs to, for the parent to be supportive. And just because you reach maturity doesn't mean that you can do without parental support from that point forward. During the American Civil War, a Confederate officer by the name of Horace Harmon Lurton was taken captive by Union forces. In fact, he was sent over here to Chicago and had a prisoner of war camp. Captain Lurton contracted tuberculosis while in that camp. His mother came to visit him and she was absolutely, she came from the South, and she was absolutely alarmed by his condition and she knew that he would die if she couldn't get him out of there and get him home and give him the necessary medication to help him survive, she went to the only place that she knew she might get some help. She traveled to Washington, D.C., and she asked for an audience of President Abraham Lincoln, and she poured out her heart about her son's condition over here in Chicago. Lincoln was so moved by the mother's concern that he sat down and he wrote a note the Union colonel in charge of that prisoner of war camp, and it simply said, let the boy go home with his mother, signed A. Wingman. Horace Harmon Lurton was released from prison. He did recover from his tuberculosis, and he went on and became a distinguished lawyer and became chief justice of the Supreme Court of his state. Just because a child grows to adulthood does not mean that he or she does not need family support. And lastly, point number three is that Christ-like love is sacrificial. <laughs> Don't you mothers know that? A young married woman, age of 24, was anxious about her first pregnancy. And she was becoming uncomfortable with her ever-changing body as the baby grew inside of her and her body was changing its appearance. And she, would, she worried that her body would never be the same again. So she called her mother and they met for lunch and her mother assured her that everything will return to normal one day. But that she might be left with some scars, better known as stretch marks. The older mother then pulled up her blouse and she showed her daughter the scars from five pregnancies and spoke of the pride and the joy that those scars represented. Because each of those pregnancies represented a dearly beloved child. The daughter writes in her diary, When I think of Mother's Day, I think of those stretch marks. You know, there was one other who gave some scars to his body. Scars of love that he gave for you and I. Love was the entire reason that Jesus Christ came to this world. It's the legacy that he commands of his followers to do. To love one another. Find unity in yourself. You can have your discussions. You can have your differences. But to love one another is the ultimate goal in unity for the family. Mother Teresa, when she was still alive, was asked to go to Russia 
to minister to survivors of a terrible earthquake. A nearly dead mother and her infant baby, both of them still alive, were pulled from the wreckage of that apartment building after being buried alive for 11 days. When Mother Teresa saw the badly damaged and crushed mother, but she was holding a healthy looking baby, Mother Teresa said, how can this be? The mother looks like this and the baby looks so healthy. The caregivers, the rescuers, told her this. And while the mother and the infant had been trapped in the collapsed building, they were both without food and water. The mother fed her baby from her breast, and when she went dry, she sliced her fingers and squeezed blood into the baby's mouth for nourishment. A mother's love. God's love. Shown in sacrificial ways. Jesus said, this new commandment I give you. Love one another. I have loved you. Would you bow your heads with me? Lord, we continue to thank you for the blessings that you give to us through our mothers, our parents, and those who have provided care for us over the years. For the grandmothers like Lois and the mothers like Eunice, to teach their children the godly ways. And when the child listens and responds to the love and the care of the godly mother that is passed on to the next generation until it arrives here in the 21st century into us. It is our turn. It is our responsibility to love one another, to honor one another, respect one another, and work toward a sense of unity in our families, our communities, our world, and our church. We give you thanks for this lesson of a mother's love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand with me, please? Turn to page number 445 in your hymnal. We will have the words on the big screen.
that our parents did. The sacrificial love of a mother, or the work that she does to become a super mom in today's world, it has changed so much in the last hundred years. It's a new responsibility to the mother's family. We ask you to bless them in their lives. We may not lack, you know, the word of God, the sound of God, the prayers of God, and the forgiveness. Be with us as we leave this place. May we know your grace and your peace outside of these walls. As we feel it from the In Christ's precious name, these people said, God is good. All the